Most of the time on dirt tracks, we're showing you brand new to the market vehicles, or we're upgrading stuff that's relatively fresh. But I know that folks who are just getting into this sport may not want to dive right into a brand new vehicle purchase. So today I'm hoping to walk you through some important steps for what to look for when you're buying a used ATV. As a reference, I have a 2009 Honda Rincon 680. This is a well-loved ride that's got just about 8,000 K on it. Hondas are known for reliability, but it doesn't mean that they don't also wear out. However, keep in mind this ATV is for reference and the specific unit that you're looking at may be slightly different. But for the most part, all information will carry over to other four-wheel drive ATVs. Right up front, there's a few key ways to identify what kind of a life your potential purchase may have had. For some of us, this is going to seem common sense, but people who are new to the sport may have a little bit of buyer's excitement when they're making that purchase and overlook the obvious, and we don't want that. First things first, if it's a private sale and the vehicle isn't washed, be aware. Don't run away, but it's usually a good sign of covering something up or just not caring for the vehicle. Look for oil leaks, check to see if the ATV has been rolled into place from another location, and if it's garage kept but in the driveway, see if you can locate where it sits at night and see if there's any mystery fluid on the ground or recent looking cleanup marks on gravel or cement. Even if the unit is clean and dry, keep an eye out for fluid leaks. And if it has been washed, make sure you check in the hard to reach areas, particularly between the frame and the skid plate. That's where you're gonna find stuff like beaver hay and swamp grass that may indicate where this thing's been used. No, a little beaver hay or mud residue isn't a reason to pass, but it is something that will lead you to pay attention in a few more spots like the winch. Sure, you may test the buttons, but very few are actually gonna pull the spool out 10 or 15 feet and look for excessive wear. If it's got synthetic rope, you may find fraying, and if it's steel, there might be severe rust, cuts, or unwinding strands, and these are indications that this thing may have seen a lot of abuse. While an ATV is an off-road vehicle, heavy use is to be expected, however, the older it is and the higher the miles, the nicer it is to know what kind of life it's led. If your prospective vehicle doesn't have a winch, move on to the rear and check out the half shafts and the CV boots. CV boots are these little pieces of rubber and they're gonna tell you a whole lot about the potential repair budget that you may need. If the vehicle has a lift kit, be aware. While lots of folks tout that as a selling feature, I consider it a drawback. The lift kit's gonna add stress to the driveline and also wear out your CV boots prematurely. Look at the flexible creases in all four boots and get your hands in there and feel all the way around the circumference of each crease. If you find grease on any of the boots, you're more than likely to have a small hole. Even a pinhole will cause grease to come out and moisture to go in. And then the inevitable, if not repaired quickly, is axle failure. One of the best ways to check for wear and tear is by using something that most of us probably don't bring along when we go to buy an ATV. It's bringing a pump jack like this Pro Point from Princess Auto, and it's gonna be worth it every single time. When you get the weight off the vehicle's wheels, you can start to feel any looseness in the bushings and bearings. Rotating wheels by hand will cause lots of driveline noise and even a new ATV, but putting static forward and back up and down pressure on the wheels will identify if there are obvious issues. On this Rincon, there are obvious bushing and bearing problems, and I can visibly see the tire slop. This thing needs some work. Much like dating, looks, mileage, and year really don't tell you a whole lot about the actual history of this vehicle. We always recommend going for a good test ride and service records, yeah, they're always nice to have. But at the end of the day, we hope these easy to follow steps will make you an educated buyer and potentially save you thousands of dollars in costly repairs down the road. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to Dirt Tracks TV's YouTube channel so you never miss another update.